So let us prepare for God's word to us this morning. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch up, does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this day, for the word that you have given to us, even the parts that seem a little startling. We pray that you would open our hearts and minds to know you and to hear your voice in a new way this morning. By your grace we pray, amen. So, in this season of Advent, the church is, um, I don't find a good place for that, Um, the church is meditating on waiting. And this first day of Advent, um, we celebrate hope and we remember hope. And this reminds me of Spanish, as so many things do, um, and the word esperar. Esperar is the Spanish word meaning to wait or to hope. In Spanish, it is the same verb, the same action. But I can say for me that my waiting and my hoping often look different from one another. When I wait, I'm often checking the clock and looking around in all directions, a little irritated that whatever I'm waiting for is not quite as punctual as I am, However, when I hope, I often take a deep breath and imagine the thing, person, or world that I long for. For me, waiting feels restless, while hoping seems to wrap me in a blanket of stillness that comforts me with the sheer anticipation of the good that might come. Before I came to Pittsburgh, I worked in a refugee resettlement organization where I often passed the waiting room to welcome people seeking asylum into our office. This was in Mexico City, Mexico, and so Spanish was the language of the office, 
which is not my native language. So I translated waiting room with my best guess. I called it the Sala de Esperanza. I called it that for months before another employee heard me and laughed. She corrected me and said it was called the Sala de Espera, not Esperanza. You see, while the verb esperar means both to wait or to hope, the noun forms have a more specific meaning. My coworker explained that waiting room is sala de espera, and I realized that for the first that for all this time, I had been calling it the hoping room, la sala de esperanza. After a moment of pondering together, we agreed that perhaps in this context, where travelers from all over the world sought refuge in Mexico City and aid from our office, that perhaps hoping room might be more accurate to what was taking place on the other side of the reception desk. This question of are we waiting or are we hoping is at the core of our gospel reading today. At this point in the story, Jesus is teaching in the temple and telling the people about the end times. Jesus describes distress between nations, restlessness of the sea, and finally describes the Son of Man coming in a cloud. While Jesus acknowledges that many people will be overcome with fear, Jesus calls his listeners to respond in steadfastness. He says, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. To illustrate the coming of the end times, Jesus tells a parable of the fig tree. Jesus explains that anticipating the coming of God's reign is as natural as watching the seasons change through the leaves of a fig tree. Jesus says, as soon as the fig tree sprouts leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. This is such an interesting statement. We have heard these kinds of words before. They remind me of Isaiah 37 that proclaims that God's reign, um, <clears throat> that God reigns over all the kingdoms on earth because God is the creator of heaven and earth. They remind me of Psalm 45 that promises that God reign, that God's reign will never end. That, and they remind me of John the Baptist prophesying the coming of Jesus, saying, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the gospel. The idea that God reigns in the world is, common, is a common theme throughout the Bible. But it always seemed to me that God's reign has always been here through creation, through Jesus, through the church. I still believe all this to be true. I believe that we can participate in God's reign in our communities even now as we love and serve one another. I believe that each time we pray, like we just did, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we are praying that God would reign in our lives now. However, there is something different about Jesus' words in this passage. They lift our eyes to the heavens and prophesy of the life to come. Jesus is describing the end times. He is describing the coming of the new creation. But when we think of the end times, people often think of the end. Rather, I believe that Jesus tells us of the completion or fulfillment of God's reign. That God's kingdom has always been part of this world, but that we knew God's reign in a new way through the incarnate Christ, and that we will know God's reign in an even fuller way in the new creation. The signs that Jesus mentions are vague. 
He talks about the sun and moon and stars. He says, on the earth, there will be distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and waves. This tells us very little. Jesus doesn't tell us what exactly to look for. And if we go off of the nations being confused or distressed, well, the world has long since arrived. I am not trying to interpret these signs. In fact, what I hear Jesus saying is to not be distracted by the world around us, by the chaos in our midst, but to look to heaven and wait on God. Jesus says to be on guard so that our hearts are not weighed down by the worries of this life. Jesus knows the reality of human life. Jesus knows that it is scary and overwhelming and hard. It can be hard to hope for the end of a pandemic, which seems so endless. It can be hard to hope that there will be peace on earth when violence seems so pervasive. It can be hard to hope that true equity is possible while racism, sexism, homophobia, and xenophobia are the plague of prejudice in our lives or in the lives of those we love. It can be hard to hope in a hospital room when we encounter the worst case scenario. It can be hard to hope when you are stranded on the side of the road, whether literally or metaphorically. This is the weight of the worries of this life that Jesus is talking about. Jesus knows that we are so often waiting for the other shoe to drop. Jesus knows that it is hard to wait, let alone hope. But Jesus says something else that is curious to me. He says that all these things that he has prophesied will take place before that generation passes away. Well, it seems that Jesus is not talking about a literal generation. What if Jesus is inviting us to identify with all of humanity as one generation of siblings? This is what I was wondering and found that Justo Gonzalez, Bible commentator and liberation theologian, happens to agree. Justo Gonzalez even takes it a step further and offers the interpretation that Jesus is calling us to solidarity with all of humanity, that our waiting for Christ to come again unites us, past, pe present, and future generations, all as one people. God lived a human life through Jesus Christ to be in solidarity with us. May we also live in solidarity with one another. Justo Gonzalez offers that as Christians, we can lift up the heads of our siblings and behold the coming of the Son of Man, not in fear, but in hope, so that we can hope together. We can hope together in the liminality of the already and the not yet. During the season of Advent, we look back at the manger and, the, and rest in the truth that God is already with us. And during Advent, we look to the future and wait and we hope that one day God's reign would be brought to completion and that all of creation would be reconciled to God. The world is one giant, chaotic waiting room. So are you waiting there? Or are you hoping there? When God is our refuge, waiting and hoping look remarkably similar. So may we hope together as one people before God. 
All glory be to God. Amen.